Uh, Jimmy, how you doing, man? I'm okay. You know, um, I didn't know Geraldo as, as well as you did and, and Patrice and the rest of the gang. Yeah. I mean, I had ran into him like everyone else at the cellar, and he came in here, and he was uh, just a really bright, intelligent guy, a yeah. uh, really funny guy. He yeah. was one of my favorites, actually. He was great. I loved his shit, and uh, it's just a really sad day. It sucks. I mean, <clears throat> it's, <clears throat> it's weird. We taped Raw Dog yesterday because my show airs today, and it was Vinny who was on, me, Bobby, and Vinny. And we talked a little bit about Greg, um, but he was, you know, he's alive. It was like we were like, ah, we don't know what's going to happen, and it's so odd. But you were foreshadowing a little bit. No, I mean, we, well, it was a tape show, right? Before for today, yeah. Before we found out about Greg, but Vinny didn't want to go into great detail. I think he got too emotional. He, you know, he, he's just. I could see when he talked about it, it was too much. So we we just kind of like, ah, hey, well, let's hope he's okay. And, blah, blah, blah. and then oh, a few I see. hours later, uh, oh, I see. The OD already happened. Oh yeah, this was okay. yesterday about. Uh, we taped it yesterday after the show for today to run today. Wow. So I'm debating. It's an odd thing to have, but it's, it seems creepy to just run me, uh, Bobby, and Vinny talking and laughing without mentioning Greg. Right. Like by cutting it, but it seems weird to, to leave it in where it's it's almost depressing, more depressing to hear, hey, well, let's hope he's okay. And it's like, yeah, they're doing a tribute to him on Raw Dog today, so maybe I don't even know if they're going to air my show. They might just. Maybe they'll just go with that all yeah, day. Yeah, maybe. Which would probably yeah, be the, the great Geraldo move. tribute all day today on Raw Dog Comedy Series 104 XM 150. I'm sure that's starting up very soon. Good. So. <clears throat> you never want to be the subject of a tribute. Yeah. That's very rarely. Are you still alive when a tribute happens? I think everyone was worried about him. Yeah. And I thought, I thought he was. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I thought he was doing better. You know, he he looked great when he was uh, uh, one of the judges on Last Comic Standing. Yeah. And I was happy for him. Like, yeah, man, this is a great spot for him. He Looks was... like the, everything's coming together for him. I know. And uh, you, you just, it, it's like everybody who knew him, you always were worried about this. You know what I mean? It's like, you know, the friend who do drinks too much, whatever it is. You know what it is. It's like you're always worried you're going to get the call or... And he was doing good, and then he wasn't, and then he was doing great. And it's like you never knew with Greg how he was doing, because he always, Greg's a healthy guy, like... He was, uh, you know, you could never tell by looking at him, like, oh, he doesn't look well. Like, Greg always looked like he was healthy. So if he was pretty cool at the moment, you never would know where he was at unless he told you. Right. And he was usually very honest about it. Yeah, he, he, he was pretty honest on our show. Yeah. Um, you know, what he was dealing with. So He was a funny guy, maybe. He was a really good comic. <laughs> and it's just, you know, he was a nice guy. He had three sons. It's just, it stinks. It's hard. Fucking, and it makes you angry. Yeah. As a friend, you get, it's like, as a friend, you get angry at your friend. Like, what the fuck, dude? You know what I mean? You, it's it's the, when you see a friend fucking up, you get mad at him. Mm -hmm. So that's what you know. It's depressing, very depressing, obviously. Yeah, it's horribly, horribly sad. So, but uh, you know, it's funny. People always say like, I, I don't tweet really melodramatic things at all. I just said, you know, he's my friend, and he, whatever. I tweeted, I tweeted a picture of us. Um, I, I was debating it because I got a call from Bob yesterday. We did the show, mm -hmm. and then uh, I talked to Vinny after, and he said that he was really in bad shape like worse than i had thought mm -hmm. i didn't realize what he was and maybe it took a turn you know how this shit goes man it's like and then uh i got a call from bob later and as soon as i saw my cell phone ring i just knew i was like Ugh, fuck i hate answering my cell phone but i kind of had to answer that one sure and uh he told me and he said kyle had called him and i think kyle heard from the family so i looked online and i saw that nick had posted to Paulo. right and nick obviously got a call he was very close to him it's uh on his facebook right which kind of confirmed it for me like oh, oh of course it's not a mistake or yeah you posted a nice picture of you and him at a wedding when, was, when was that wedding? wedding that was in uh, june oh. um it was gnome uh, is manny's son who owns the cellar and he got married in uh, june 28th that where tom papa actually Fucking did the wedding, and they actually had him certified, you know, right. marriage ref thing. Right. And uh, Geraldo and his girlfriend were there. And you know what's funny? After I posted that, somebody sent a photo from because he hosted the Nasty Show in July. So we did a bunch of shows in Montreal together, and somebody posted a picture of all of us. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a homoerotic little photo. Greg always took really homoerotic photos. <laughs> I, I found one from a few years ago. I'm kind of lurking behind him, <laughs> like a small young lad. And uh, somebody sent me one of the uh, the Nasty Show that we did, uh, which was me, Bobby Voss, Greg, uh, this girl, Tiffany Haddish, and Bobby Slayton. It was a good shot. I'll post that. Yeah, right on. It looked like he could grow a beard in for three hours. Dude, I, I fucking, I didn't realize. I he shaved that morning in that shot we're looking at. He really, he's, he's the, Colombian. He's got the biggest five o'clock shadow you'll ever see. Yeah, he was like, he had that Latin male thing. Yeah. And he had a temper, too. I saw Geraldo a couple of times yell at people. Yeah. Oof. 
Yeah, well, he didn't play fucking games, man. I really, you never would want to be on the fucking business end of a Geraldo Scully. It was creepy because, you know, TMZ, they uh, posted a picture of uh, Geraldo hanging out at the Stress Factory. And they're calling it the last picture of Greg Geraldo. Right? Ah, maybe it was. And he looks pretty good in the picture. And I guess later that night, whatever happened, happened. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know either. It's like you hear so many details. I don't know what rumors are true. That's why I haven't speculated because he's my friend. And it's like you don't want to say something, you know, that's going to – I I, like, I kind of – I know his family. So it's like I don't want to say anything. You don't want to be irresponsible anyway, but I don't want to say anything stupid and all of a sudden be wrong and be the asshole whose name is attached to saying something sure, dumb rumor sure. about my buddy. Sure, of course. Um, but it's he shouldn't have died. I mean, it's like, you know, it's like one of those things. It was like uh, – let me say. That was the last picture of supposedly – Taking out uh, the maybe stress factory was. after one of the shows. Maybe it was. Like, yeah, poor Greg. Typical comedian's luck. It's with three guys. Right. Isn't that just, that's just a comic's fucking luck. Right, there Three it is. dudes, guys wearing flannels, guy, and one guy's a pink hat on, and a fucking yellow thing on his wrist. <laughs> Jesus. Well, if he could sit here and fucking see that, he would not want that to be his last <laughs> no, photo. No, no, Some chick all. with giant tits, baby. <laughs> Some cool stage photo. Uh, fuck. <laughs> it's just a comedian's fucking luck. I mean, was he was he clean, Jimmy? I don't know. I mean, he told us he was clean. One was, of the one of the last uh, times he was on the show, he was. I think he was honest about it. Like when I would see Greg, I would never. It's weird when you're sober. You don't. I don't preach to people. I don't. Uh, try to make them do what I think they should do. Because you drive people away doing that. It's like, here's what I think you should do. Right. It's not my place. We, he knew I was a sober person. We had talked many times, and he knew I was here for him. So I would see him, and I would always go, hey, man, how are you? Are you good? And he, we both knew what I was asking him. And uh, in those times where I hadn't seen him, he would go, yeah, great. Or he would go, oh, you know, I'm right, you know. Mm -hmm. And that meant that maybe he wasn't as good as I would like him to be, but he didn't want to talk about it, and I have to respect that. Sure. But... Uh, it was hard to get a read in Montreal because he was very busy, too. We did 14, what was it, fucking, we did a lot of shows in Montreal. Two a night, then three a night, Thursday, Friday. So it's hard to tell what kind of state somebody's in when they're actually in the dressing room reading notes and, you know. But he, his performing was great. Right. So I, it wasn't like I would watch him perform and go, oh, that guy's uh He was fucking brilliant, man. He was a funny fuck. Yeah. Really funny guy. This shit just scares the hell out of you, huh? Yeah. Because I mean, you never think it's going to be your friend. It's like Geraldo's a, real, a rough one because I know him really well for a long fucking time. It's not, you, you never, it's always the other guy. It's always like, oh, that, that singer, or it's, you know, some performer that you don't know. But when it's a guy you know, it's like, it just seems like not real. I still can't really wrap my head around it. I'm like, I know it's true, but it's like, ugh. Kind of in shock a little bit. Well, yes and no. I mean, I knew it was coming, but, you know, it's just, it's just a, it's a rough one to wrap your head around for a little while, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, you guys hang out at the cellar last night. Uh, yeah, for people that don't know, when these guys aren't performing, you know, across America, their hometown club for the most part is the comedy the cellar. cellar in the village. Yeah, I think most of you, uh, most of you guys, would say just that. Oh, that's yeah. your that's your hometown club. Sure. So you know what's nice, and if you guys ever you know make it to New York City, you go down to the comedy cellar on a Tuesday, a Wednesday, sometimes a Thursday. You see all these guys yeah. just hanging out doing sets and uh, just kind of working on their craft before yeah. they hit the road for the weekend. So I would imagine yesterday there were a lot of the guys down there just kind of hanging and talking. Yeah, I mean, uh, again, I haven't talked to Kyle. I, I want to call him. Um, but it's, like, it's just going to be a, a sad conversation. You know what I mean? It's like you try to avoid as much. Do you guys ever have sad conversations? Oh, sure. Yeah, I mean, we talk about everything. Not I mean, often, though, right? It's because comics have a way of handling things. We're, we're not a – it's like we're, we're comfortable with – sad things in a weird way like we comfortable we talk about all this rotten stuff in our personal i mean my, the the name i've been working under at the comedy cellar is the guy who's bob kelly's stepfather who used to beat him no oh, really you know what i mean and that was <laughs> you know and bob knows that i mean that's how we are with each other so right um if geraldo had pulled through we would have given him a, a comedian's beating it's what we did so we, we would all talk about it but it was very sad last night and uh the only you know tom pop i saw and a lot of guys I didn't see, though, but who might have come in later. I don't know. I didn't see Colin. I didn't see Patrice or Nick or other guys I would have wanted to see. But I saw Keith. Mm -hmm. It's just miserable. And a lot of the people there are having a few drinks. And, you know, they're just going to – and I just left. I had to pack, and I wanted to eat, and I was just very, very depressed. I'm like, eh. You just wanted out. Yeah, I tell it he were very – I know Dave is probably bummed today, too. He, they, they were really good friends. Right. Yeah, for a long time. <sighs> wow. It's just you – know, you don't know what to say. No, I mean – and it's because it's, it's a part of it is – when it's your friend, um, it, it's it, it's annoying. You're, you get you get annoyed at your your, your friend for fucking up. Mm -hmm. It's as simple as that. You know, you get annoyed at your friend. 
All right. How's but, Vinny doing? I think he's okay. He was very sad. You know, Vinny's a, a mush like the rest of us. You know, he's a nice guy. He's a Vinny owns the stress factory yes. for the people uh, that don't know where Geraldo was uh, performing. Yeah, didn't and a make comedian. His, didn't yeah. make his last uh, performance, which was what Saturday night. Saturday, yeah. There so was, all this went down on Friday, I guess. I, yeah. After maybe he performed. Yeah, and I don't know when it actually happened. It was sometime Saturday. It's, it's so many sketchy. I guess whenever it's something like this, there's police involved. They have to see what, make sure it was nothing shady. Sure. So they don't release details. Well, they keep saying there was a party in his room. I've heard that wasn't true. See, see that was that's the, yeah, that's that's why you don't want to bring any of this shit up. I guess. Yeah, it was probably here's what probably happened. I'm I'm going to speculate that uh, there was people in the fucking hotel. There was probably something going on, and they attributed it to Geraldo's room. But from what I knew about Greg, I, I just can't picture him having a bunch of people. In a hotel Maybe he did, room. I never drank with him, so I don't know. Right, right. But I can't picture him having a bunch of people. Yeah. But um, it was funny. He was a funny. He's a great comic. Yeah. A great comic. Fucking, uh, you know. And he had nice. His sons were very nice. I, I haven't seen them in years, but they were nice boys. He had um, a good family. How old uh, are the sons? I don't remember. One, the, one, the last time I saw one, uh, young Greg, uh, his Greg Jr. was, uh, I want to say 2004. As tough crowd was ending on the set, I was violently ill that day, so I couldn't. I was gonna, you know, shake his hand or pat his head, but I want to get him fucking sick. So I'm gonna say it's about five or six years since I've seen him. He's probably 14 now. Wow. And uh, he has two younger kids. <clears throat> that's what's frustrating. It's like you know, dude. But that's how it is for most people. Most people who are in that partying, you know what I mean? It's how it goes, man. It's, it's most people don't, I think, fulfill their potential. They right. don't live as long as they should. Seems like it happens to a lot of comedians, too, huh? Yeah, I think comics have a longer shelf life than most, even. I mean, musicians drop dead every fucking eight minutes. Right. Comics do, but I think that the fact that we get the bile out and mm -hmm. the fact that you are always attacking what you hate so much, there, there is something that really is healthy about that because you don't build it up. It's sure. Like you could just, whether it's politics or your wife or your friends, you just you get it out on stage, um, which helps, I think. It really does. It's like it's, it's a tension release, so I think... Comics probably have better luck with their hearts. All right. But people, it's funny. When people are, they asked me for a statement yesterday, and it's it's weird. It's like, and I gave one, and you know, I said something nice about my friend. It's like, right. Um, but people mean well, but some of the melodramatic things well, they we, say, it was just. Well, we got one on, <laughs> on instant feedback. Oh, uh, this guy means well, too. Yeah. Sir, I, we know you mean well. And, and I'm sorry ahead of time, uh, David, in San Bruno, California. Yeah, boy, David. I really am sorry ahead of time because uh, obviously this is how, how you're dealing with it. He writes, uh, Mr. Carlin, Mr. Pryor, Mr. Hicks, take care of our friend Greg. He really meant a lot to us, and we're all going to miss him terribly. Tell him that we loved him. The world's not as funny now. Um. I'm, I'm, I can't even get oxygen in. Who was that? What's his name? Uh, let me see here. David uh, Hetchum. We know you mean well, David, and that was a very nice sentiment. Right. But any Mr. Pryor, Mr. Hicks, how about Mr. Kevorkian? Please call David. <laughs> so we never have to get uh, feedback like that again. Well, what are you supposed to do? Though? I know. You know what I mean? You want to say something really nice, and then the party you wants to fucking write jokes. I think the easiest thing to do is just to do R.I.P., man. Yeah. Just go R.I.P. Yeah. It's a safe one. No one's going to call you out on it. I don't you're expressing what you're thinking. I don't say thoughts and prayers. Just I'm telling you, that Danza stuff we used to do ruined me. Although I am thinking of his, I have been thinking of his family a lot the last That's what makes this one real. a lot harder because yeah. uh, there's, there's three sons without a father today. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's rough. It's, this is not a, a, you know, a guy that you know, didn't have a family. Yeah. And, uh, it makes it a little rougher. He was a respected guy. He really was a respected guy, man. I mean, comics never, you couldn't badmouth Greg as far as, you just couldn't. He was a nice guy, but I mean, as a comic, we love to fucking badmouth each other. We love it. Right. You know, when guys get a lot of TV opportunities, you're like, oh, motherfucker. you know, you want to find what's wrong with him. But he was just a prolific guy. He always had new shit. He always had a really, really smart angle. He was not a predictable guy at all. Mm -hmm. um, you, you could not like him as a performer. You, you could not not respect him. So yeah, it stinks. We were so happy too because we watched that last comic standing, and he was he was shining bright, man. Yeah. 
he was shining bright, and I'm thinking, here we go. You know, uh, Geraldo getting his shit together, and he's getting the shot that he deserves. This is going to lead to other things, obviously, because yeah. he really did well on that show this past summer. Yeah, and it was, you know, again, you were always happy to see a guy like him, or Andy Kindler, too, who's a right. comedian's love, and he's been around for a long time, and he's funny. Yeah. I, I didn't know the woman who was on with him. I didn't know her, but yeah. you should see those two guys getting a shot, you know. It's like a lot of them. I'm sure the last, a lot of the last comic guys will say something. The contestants, right, will say something. But they'll mean well, but they didn't really know him. Of course, it was good in an elevator once. He thumbs up to me. Uh, oh, really? Uh, well, uh, we got a Greg Giraldo bit we could play. We'll take an early break today, maybe. Sure. Do a couple minutes of Greg Giraldo. So I don't know what to do with that Raw Dog show. I really don't. I don't want it to be. In, I, don't, I don't like to edit out stuff that was said. It, oh, well, but, but I'm debating it because it just sounds depressing. Yeah, but you know what? Is it in bad taste? No, no, no. We, then, then I say air it. Yeah, maybe we will. Yeah, yeah. Unless they, again, unless if in they're some doing... weird way it's in bad taste now, because I know you don't go down that road of bad taste like that. But if if you feel like it's not in bad taste, I would I would run it because it's a real moment. Yeah. I mean, not everything is about the laugh. Sometimes no. people like you know listening to real moments. I don't mind that. I just feel bad us talking. It's, it's like so quick. After like 24 hours later or six hours later, I knew right. that he was dead. Right. And he was probably, he might have been dead when we were talking about that. But we were just saying like, yeah, I hope he's okay. You know, you know it's like you, you, just hold, you keep him in your, th Yeah. it was like the optimism is what bothers me. You know what I mean? We didn't, we didn't say anything bad about him, but. Yeah. I, I, that's, that's where I'm at. If, yeah. if you don't think it's in bad taste, I say you run it. Yeah, maybe I will. Because it, it's a moment. You know, you guys were having a moment with the whole thing. Yeah, it was it was a funny show too. Yesterday we had fun with me, Vinny, and, and Bob. You know, again, guys, you know for a long time. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm babbling at this point, but I love Greg, and it's terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, we love to have him on the show. I love seeing him at the cellar. Guy. That you know? when he talked about that fucking being on a plane, and pa and it's amazing how you know somebody, but I, we never drank together. And when he told that plane story about being on an airplane and uh, being paranoid, thinking they were talking, about, that was fucking hilarious. How it's horrible awful. is it, Greg, being wired on a plane? Oh, my God. It's a fucking nightmare. It's awful, right? I, 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 well, was, I, I once flew. I was flying to do this fucking college gig once, and I'd been up, and, and I was totally paranoid. Like, you know, the paranoia that kicks in, and, and I, I thought everybody around me were, were agents that were out to get me. And I started, and this, I mean, it sounds crazier wow. to people. I, it's temporary insanity, and then it passes. You know, like, it's temporary, psych, you know, whatever you call it, psychotic, schizophrenia, whatever. You start hearing people, and, and I thought, and this one guy starts speaking to somebody in, a, in a, like an Australian accent, I'm like fuck, it's international, like there was an international operation to find me. And I went and sat down next to the guy, and I could you imagine when I landed, the, the cops were there, they, had, they said you're acting very erratic on the oh, plane. Oh wow, but really? Yeah. By then I'd eaten all this like all these like um, you know sedative type of things, so they, they actually let me go. Which was, what did you say? Like I've been up for a few days, yeah, and I said, I've had family trouble. And they said, are you on any substances? And I said, well, I took some uh, yeah, Xanax, you know, because that, that's that's old state. And they, oh, do you have a prescription for Xanax? And I said, no, actually I don't, but it, it, it helps me. You know, a friend of mine gave it to me, knew I was. Scared of flying, and they go, you know, we could arrest you right now for, you know, for your behavior and for for being on a substance. It's not you don't have a prescription for. And I said, well, I, I don't, I you know, I don't know. I hope you don't. <laughs> I hope you don't. Exactly. I would have challenged him. You should have poked him in the chest. Yeah. So oh, go ahead, yeah. pig. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Blood test me, motherfucker. Take me in. Yeah, but that, uh... What did you do? You sat next to the Australian? Oh, fuck. I sat next to him and talked to him. And I, I could you imagine what this fuck... And then it was this, like, Indian woman sleeping behind me, and I kept looking between the thing, between the, the seats, and I'm like... And I was writing, taking notes about all this. I, I, I have these notes. I can read this shit. It's like the rantings of a Dude, man. Dude, that's man. a fucking one-man show. Oh, it's unbelievable. I, I, go, wow. I go, they're so clever to put a, uh, the woman pretending to sleep behind me. She's pretending to sleep, but she's listening the whole time, and I stick my head out. <laughs> he's like, holy he's shit. He's like John Doe from Seven. That fucking yeah, right. This Greg is yeah. fucking. Oh man! And if you you know like like if you shaving oh, off his if fingers, if you beautiful sleep, mind. If you don't sleep for a couple the, days, a beautiful yeah. mind guy. If yeah. you don't sleep for a couple of days, even if you don't do any drugs, yep. like you go fucking nuts. Like I've been with people, you know, these like girls that try to help you, you know, and uh, and but they and so like they're so sleep deprived at the end either, you know, too. But they haven't even done any drugs or anything, and they're just like fucking frazzled and crying. Like Jesus, this yeah. Is, how, where did it all go? Don't wrong? you love all the fucking codependents that yeah. fucking rush in? Uh, That's great. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's it's a lot easier to meet girls when you're. Been up for four days and you can't even talk, but then you know, you, just, you try to be a, a well, never mind. Well, you always know the, the, <laughs> oh, the ones that were attracted to you at that time are fucking there's problems there. There's problems. Yeah. How manipulative would it be if I said, Look, guys, you should come see me in North Carolina? It's what Greg would have wanted. Oh, my. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the big tra Too the, re funny. the real tragedy of this is Geraldo was a big chip fan. Yeah, you know, we lost. Oh, a was chip. he? Oh, he loved chip. Jesus. Loved him. God, you're down to only two fans. Colin, now. somebody else. God damn it. Not Bob Kelly. Uh, Bob, cause, cause I've, Chip I've, is smarter than Bob. That's why. I've heard about this Chip character. I've I've never heard him. Though. I kind of keep him. Uh, I've heard of him, but I never heard him. Yeah, I don't bring him around here much. He you don't. Feel, he doesn't feel welcome. All right. 
Hey, uh, Greg, we have the you had the bit. Yeah, Greg Giraldo uh, passed. Jimmy really, uh, really did, did a good job talking about Greg uh, to open up the show today. Make sure you listen to the replay if you want to, uh, you know, check out what Jimmy uh, is saying about the whole thing. But uh, we're gonna play some of his bits and some of the times he was on our show. Yeah, and you uh, brought up uh, him talking about being on a plane. I just remember hearing this. And again, knowing the guy for as long as I knew him, like I didn't realize at that point it had gotten that bad. Right. So it was, uh, he was just an honest, funny comedian about his life and the bad stuff in his life and the divorce. He just talked about everything. Right. He just made him a great comic. He talked about everything. He didn't hide any of it. No, uh, most of you guys don't hide uh, much. So a lot of the guys I respect don't, but a lot of guys do, man. A lot of guys are, are, are set up, knock them down guys and, and, you know, set up punch, set up punch. And, uh, you know, you'll never know what's truly going on in their personal life, which right. is okay. I mean, look, Rodney Dangerfield was like that. You never knew what Rodney's life was really like. He was just, hey, my wife. And, you know, right. after she was daddy talking. He was a major pothead. Yeah, major pothead. Major fucking pothead. He didn't talk about any of that stuff. It was all jokes, and that was great. Wouldn't you love to re uh, read a book on Rodney? It's too yeah. bad he didn't ever write one. Yeah, he did. I have it. What? He has no about it. When did he write it? A while ago. I think it was, it was either about him or it was him. Yeah, I have it. It didn't do well. I don't remember hearing about it. Yeah, it's out. Oh, you know what? I'm going to have to check it out on my Kindle. Yeah, his friend Joe Ansis was a buddy of mine who I, I think I've talked about before. Joe is a good guy. I wish he was still alive because he'd probably have great Rodney stories. Right but on. he's not, so he doesn't. What happened? Ah! What happened? Severe flooding. Yeah. Severe flooding. And people uh, don't know how to drive in the rain. And traffic like I've never seen in my life. Mm. Seems to have been a um, couple accidents, puddles that uh, swallow up the little cars. Yeah. So when people when people bash the uh, what they call the gas guzzlers, the Escalades, the SUVs, go fuck yourself. Because you could ride right over those cars. I'll go right through those puddles. They got to step on the brake and go through them at like two miles an hour. Perish the thought some, some water gets up into your engine compartment and you stall <laughs> out. Get out of the way. Ah, damn. Is it raining out? <sighs> <laughs> I know it is. And moment. Long Island, crazy rain. Really? Crazy rain. I was checking my pumps. Mm. I love when you got to check your pumps. Has your pool overflowed yet? No, it, uh, it gets close, though. Yeah. It gets, like, right up to the top of the skimmer. And then I got the, uh, the pumps for the basement. Right. And that's imperative because I have, like, the nicely finished basement. Has it ever flooded the basement? The movie theater. Once before I had it finished, mm. one of the, uh, I have, like, these well windows, oh, these yeah, window yeah, yeah. wells in, in the basement. Yeah. One completely filled up with water where it looked like uh, I, I lived in an aquarium. You oh, can see the water cool. right there. And then that glass just it gave broke. Through. It broke. And about 55 gallons of, of water. Of dirty water. Yeah. Came pouring into the uh, basement. Yeah. This was pre-finish. Happens in New York. Uh, my brownstone I lived in fucking lost everything in the basement. I'm one of those guys. The whole wall. Oh, yeah. I remember the whole that. wall came down. Yeah. And the whole yeah. basement had a foot of dirty, sludgy, almost sewery water. And if it's finished... There's no way you got to rip everything out. Well, the finished basement mold. Is, is a nice facade because it, the water still wants to go down in there. Yeah, Kenny lost a a, a lot of shit in his basement. Yeah, with the fucking rain once. Mm. Just a pain in the ass, though. What is this? I didn't even know we were getting remnants of a tropical storm. Yeah, I didn't hear about this shit. Sort of a like uh, like a hurricane that kind of fell apart type of thing. I think. Yeah. Well, yeah. didn't it go through Florida? Middle of Florida, now it's just moving, uh, up, to, yeah. moving up the coast. Heavy rain. Like heavy rain today, uh, this morning, and then it clears up for a little bit, and then uh, massive uh, rain later on. And poor, I hear poor Jimmy's got to fly. Well, I don't Are know. Are you freaking out? You get a train <laughs> schedule? We're looking now. No, well, at least I'm on a prop. That's always good in this oh, weather. Oh, <laughs> oh, no. Why would I be on a 767? A prop. Oh. Well, but it's not. It, it's, it's the bigger prop Continental has, which is the, uh, they seat like 70 the, people. The Embraer? It's bigger than the Embraer. Ooh. Embraers are 51 seaters. They're jets, and these props are not jets. They're props. The Bombardier? -y. I don't know if it's a Bombardier. <laughs> Bombardier. Is it, is it two seats in one, or is it two? Two and two. Oh, two and two. Two and two. Two and two, two, and two all the way back. I don't, I don't get the two and one. 
It seems like the plane has to be lopsided. Yeah. Doesn't that seem I don't that way? It. I don't get it. So I'm, we're looking at train schedules now because here's my thoughts, and I'm going to really take my time with this. Why don't, you just, <laughs> <laughs> why don't you tell everyone to go fuck themselves and you just hang out in New York? That'd be nice. Can't do it. It's money, man. I got to pay bills. Look it's like you, you can't. It's a mortgage. Look you, at you. I can't do that to the club last minute and, or people that bought tickets. Well, and, what, are, what, what have they done for you? Well, when I get down there, hopefully they're going to realize my travel day and go, this kid's balls look heavy. Let's drain them onto our tits. <laughs> um, I like a guy that'll risk his life just to go and do a comedy show. It's like, it's, come on. If it's safe, they'll fly. If it's not, they won't. That's oh, why I want to be on a sure. train. That's what the big bopper said. I really am an asshole, right? Oh, God. I know. The bop big the bop. Bop. Bang, bang, bang. Uh -huh. Hello, baby. That's where uh, they thought they had a nice <clears throat> nice day for flying, too. <laughs> and I'm thinking poor Geraldo, too. He dies, and everybody's going to do all these tributes to him, and they're uh -huh. going to do... And then all of a sudden, I have to go and fucking ditch it in a plane crash. They're going to throw, oh, yeah, and him. Oh, believe It'll me. It'll just be awkward and secondary. And You and... guys wouldn't even be known because Tony <laughs> Curtis is dead. Yeah. Greg Ooh. Geraldo's already off the, He's off Who's the dead? map. Tony Curtis. Tony Curtis died overnight. Greg Geraldo was getting all this exposure today, and all of a sudden, it's gone already. Because I, of Tony Curtis. I haven't Tony heard Curtis of Tony died. Curtis. Tony Curtis. You know Spartacus. Tony Curtis. He's old. No one gives a fuck uh, about Tony Hollywood Curtis. That's, royalty. That's, that's, that's a big Hollywood one. royalty. But he's old, man. He was Greg was a guy in his prime. He, I know. Tony Curtis is like, all right, that's like the way it should be. An older guy has a wonderful career. He retires, then he fucking yeah, goes. Yeah, I yeah. thought he was already dead, to be honest with you. Yeah, I know, right? I really did. You thought he was one of those guys? Yeah. I didn't know. Jamie Lee Curtis's father. That's right. Was it expected? Uh, well, he, he was, was 85. Oh, yeah, all right. Yeah, maybe. At what 85, I think you start expecting uh, the Grim like, Reaper uh, anything. Geraldo. to come and get you. 44, that man. Fucking Fuck. came out of just like, not came out of nowhere. I mean, obviously, if you're OD and you're in the hospital and but when they said, like, stable, and yeah. you're thinking, all right. But that was all those rumors. No, yeah. we, no one knows what was uh, happening. I Nobody know. knows what was. And still no one knows what really transpired. Is there going to be some kind of investigation? I, I imagine there is whenever there's something like this that happens. I don't know. Yeah. No idea. I mean. That is a shame. I don't know, man. Whatever it is, it just sucks. I know. I was, I was, I got so sad looking at that picture of you and him. It was, it was so sad because you guys were just smiling. Yeah, it was a cool being. Greg, I said before we took weird pictures together, mm. and uh, you know, I have a lot of photos with him from Tough Crowd over the. I mean, we photographed hundreds of times. Yeah, yeah. But that was one at the, the wedding. We just uh, we had a good time at Noam's wedding. Who's uh, you know, and he was in good spirits, and his chick was with him, and me and my girl, we had fun. He had yeah. a new chick and everything, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Was yeah. she cool? Yeah, she was really nice. I didn't know her that well. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but um, she was like, oh, let's take some pictures, you know. So we took a bunch, and we hung for a little bit. And Atal was there, and Tom Papa, and the whole crew. It was good. Yeah, you lost one of your crew, man. Yeah, he was, he was, he was one, one, of one of the tough crowd guys, one of the Colin Quinn show guys. One of the main mm -hmm. tough crowd guys. Oh, were, what, who, it was Patrice. Co well, Pat Greg, you, they love more than any of us. Greg, Greg Geraldo. <clears throat> Greg, Colin, myself. Keith. Keith, Patrice, and Nick DiPaolo. Nick like DiPaolo. Colin was the, the, lead, the head of it. And, of course, the five of us were kind of the, the, the show regulars. Right. Just no justice in this world. There are fucking ten people off the top of my head I could think of that <laughs> oh my God, Lindsay, should probably. Yeah. <laughs> Lindsay Lohan, Snooki, uh, Yakov Smirnoff. <laughs> Some parody guys. Why does Yakov well, just I, continue? Because I want to say Carrot Top there, but in all honesty, we're now friends with the guy. Yeah. yeah. Like we turned the corner with the Carrot Top. He's a cool guy. And, yeah. He and knows it, what he does isn't. He act. absolutely knows yeah. and, he, and he talks about it. Like so he's making fucking mega bucks doing it. Right. So the Carrot Top thing doesn't work anymore in my, no, in no. my world. So I have to go with Yakov. Yakov like, Smirnoff. Just so many other people that, you know, uh, you're like, oh, God, why? Yeah. Yeah, yeah a, I don't know. a bright, hilarious guy. I was really fucking bumming though. Yeah, me too. I I was actually bumming from the day before yesterday because I kind of you kind of knew where this was headed. Oh yeah, and and uh, oh I, you did. I had a feeling, yeah, because I I, I realized that initial reports I had gotten were just <clears throat> not I, intentionally but unintentionally I, too optimistic. I left you alone mm. yesterday because I asked you and Bob Kelly, and I could tell by your body language that you knew something that. Uh, the rest of us did not. And I went, okay, leave that alone. You know, yeah, because you, well, you never want to. You knew yesterday before. It, I suspected strongly, but I, I'm one of those guys, man. And you don't I, want the jinx in. But I also, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bad friend sometimes. Like, I kind of wish I had gone to see him, but he was in, you know, only for a couple of days. And uh, 
What, see him in the hospital? It's like at a, Were whatever. people going to the hospital? A couple of people. I didn't realize they were. I actually did not know, but a couple of my friends went down. And I thought, maybe I'll go when I come back because I have to leave today. Was he even awake, though? No. No. See, no. that's just it. He never like, gained conscious. No. Yeah. And I don't want to remember him like that. No, I know. That's how I am, too. It's like, I don't want I really... <clears throat> Because sometimes I get shit for not going to the hospital and stuff like that. It's like, you know something? I don't want to fucking see people like that. And it's also you don't want to. I, I cry a lot and shit like that. I, I'm a blubbering idiot. And it's like, I don't want to burden the family. That's the, the worst oh part. God, I'm the yeah. worst. I can't handle it. And I'm what, just going to be sad and uh, bum his kids out. And then you'd be one of those people that just throws themselves. Oh, my God. Throws himself on the bed or the gravesite. Or the coffin uh, you, during do, the fucking week. Do wake. you throw yourself in the hole like, take me instead? Oh, no. My God. A Even lot they, of mamas do that. <laughs> yeah. If I was Are dying, guy, no, if I was dying, I would drag someone else in and go, take them. <laughs> I'm selfish. <Take> them. <laughs> what about I'm this cocksucker? Good. <laughs> yeah. You cry a lot, but you're not stupid. Yeah, I remember okay. when Manny was dying in the hospital. We were all in the hospital, and I Manny just... Manny and Sal. Yeah, let's do it for Manny. <laughs> it's the one who did Café Wa. <laughs> Manny was the owner of the Manny, comedy Not cell. Manny Roth, Manny uh, Dwarman, whose son, Noam, is wedding or right. something. Yeah. And Manny was... He had cancer, and we knew he was going to die very soon. And I couldn't... I was dealing with talking and stuff, and, and just to see Manny so broken, because he was, he was the funniest motherfucker uh. any of us knew. He was brutal. But I, I just looked out the window and cry. I couldn't even look at him. And I'm like, you it's just going to depress that, yeah. him yes. to see me look. If, if someone's looking at you and they're bawling, it's fucking horrible. Yeah. You're like, it I better must be, be because your cock is so big <laughs> yeah. that the person's crying that theirs is so small. Out of jealousy. <laughs> yes. Or if it's a woman going, my God, you're breaking my spine with that <laughs> building you call a cock, sir. <laughs> But I didn't want to. Atel was very fun. I loved the tell, and Geraldo was great. I mean, Geraldo was holding his hand, and I, I many yeah, once I want to hold wow. his hand, and Geraldo did it, and I couldn't do it. Wow. I was too weak, and I always loved Geraldo for that. He was strong enough to hold Manny's hand. I, I couldn't do it. Were you guys there when yeah, he passed? Rough. No, me and Colin were in Iraq. Which was, was, he was very, very bad. Should have been in an old medieval rack, the two of you. <laughs> <laughs> right. Not that good. But... Sometimes workplace stuff works. <laughs> I know. <laughs> um, no, we were in uh, Iraq when it happened, or we. Colin, we were in Kuwait, on our way into Iraq, and Colin got the call in the hotel, in the Marriott in uh, uh, Kuwait, and he got a call from Booker, and he didn't want to hear it from him, mm -hmm. so he got on the phone, and the guy goes, Colin, and Colin goes, oh, no, no, and I think Colin like, hung up on him. Wow. Because Colin did not want to hear the news of Manny from him. Um, but we found out, I, I think Colin told me the next day, once we got into Iraq, that he was dead. So we, we couldn't go to the, I missed Manny's wake and funeral. Mm. We were away for a week, and by then you're already in, in country, as they say. Right, sure. I don't, uh, I'm, I'm not a big wake funeral guy. No, I gotta go. I, Who gotta is, I know you gotta go. Who I know. Is? That's true. You know, Nobody enjoys you. them. <laughs> Oddly you, enough, you suck it up and you there, go. It there sucks. There are a few people. Oh, I know. Believe me, I, I go to no one's things. a funeral guy. <laughs> there are a <laughs> few people Bob Eatman. <laughs> that just what do you think love goes those on things? in those fucking rooms. There are a few people that enjoy no, going really. to those. I, I, no. I think they're twisted, but, you know. No. no, you got you get joking. Almost like a Harold and Maude fucking thing. I would go on record and say I don't think anyone enjoys it, unless it's some one of your sick fetishes. Kind of like the drama. And some people like the drama yeah. and the fucking, like, the emotion. And feed off that shit. And, and feed off it. Yeah, I'm not saying they, they enjoy going to a loved one's death uh, celebration, <laughs> but but there is, the, like, what? this, it's something different. It's drama. It gets them out of the house. It's just... Like you're trying to save uh, yourself. Uh, what do you think happens in there? They make balloon animals and, yeah. and, and hand out noisemakers. <laughs> get a, get a, a nice band to kind of fucking perform for everybody. Well, like all those the, old New Orleans. All ones. the dead guys in the front of the room. Those New Orleans ones are pretty cool. There are tragedy junkies who yeah. marry themselves to it in a weird way because they what, they wanna... get all happy when they find out they it's can go no, to one of these. It's things? not a happiness. No, no, it's not. It's not. A, it's not. A, it's not even a, a shitty. I they hate the person. They feed off the sadness of they it. They feed like off the sadness. the sadness. They like the drama. They like the everybody else being together. I mean, I I don't know if I've ever seen any of these people, but uh, I've heard about it. I'm definitely not one. I don't like these things. I go to them. I never look at the um, the body in there though. No, never look. I'll always look away, and when I walk up to do my little, you know, you got to kind of kneel over there and go, hey, say a little prayer and stuff, I never look. Really? As I'm walking up, I look at my shoes, 
And then I kneel down and I look at my like my, my kneecaps sitting on the little kneely thing, and then I get up and turn away. I don't want to look. The, the curiosity at, doesn't get you. No, nope. oh, I, I look. don't want to look at a dead guy's face. Somebody I knew that was alive. I remember everybody. I remember. I, I remember them as being alive. What, what you what you what you see is a uh, bad makeup job. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't need like, that. That's not how he looked when he was alive. I don't look. You don't look. I look. No, it's creepy. A little curiosity. That's no, it. No, can't look. Not, not even for a second. I mean, that I'm not, sticks in your head. I'm not excited about it, but it, you got to look. It shit sticks in your head. I'll usually look. You look? You look? I do, yeah. I don't look. Do you um, touch? No. Oh, God, the people that, they, they pat the hands. I've touched. The yeah. hands that are like, they're folded over on the stomach or something, and they'll pat the hand and look. I, I went to my grandma's funeral. I must have been like 10 years old or whatever, and I saw my grandfather leaning over the coffin, and he took my dead grandma's hand. And then kissed her on the cheek, and I was incredibly creeped out by that. Oh yes! I'm like, Hi. I'm just thinking, I'm like, oh my god, he just kissed a dead body. <laughs> yeah, it's like, what are you no, do, man, no, you can't what are you do that. Do? No, you gotta touch. No, no touching. I, if I don't know the person, I don't touch. No touching. Know the person. Don't know the person. No touching. No, no touching. touching. Touch if you if you know the person a little bit. I would never touch. Oh, it just uh, I can only imagine. It, it feels like a mannequin. I think it would feel like a, a raw chicken before you like start, when you're putting a dry rub on it. Yes. <laughs> you know, you feel like the f the f cold flesh kind of rolling under your hand. Depending how old the person is, yeah, you're about right. And I don't want to see that the the face. I don't want to see the face made up like that with the friggin' mouth closed and walks. That's old school too. Uh, a lot of the a lot of the a lot of the funerals aren't they closed now? Close casket. You can, yeah. Put a nice little picture That's up. That's what I've heard. I don't know. What the I like fuck that. Do I know? I'm all for closing that fucking lid and putting a nice picture up. Yeah. I'm... Then people remember that. Yeah. What do you got to look? What year is this? You got to look. They did that so so if the guy started breathing, they they wouldn't bury him alive. They kept the fucking lid open as long as possible. Just to make sure? Make sure. You don't want the poor bastard clawing away six feet under. That'd be horrible. Well, let's go to Bub in uh, Philly. Bub. Bub. What's up, Bub? What's up, boys? How's it going? Hello. How are you, brother? Good, good. Hey, uh, I want to see, did you guys see what that cunt Gilbert Gottfried said about Geraldo yesterday? Mm -mm, what uh, did he, <clears throat> I, his tweet was a little rough. I read it, too. What I, did he write? But, but Gilbert's that way, man. Come on. Well, I, I mean, I don't know. I, you know, that was kind of my question. Jimmy, you know personally. What did he write? It was a little rough. What did he write? Uh, he wrote, if, if Greg Geraldo gets cremated, will it be called the Greg Geraldo Rose? That's fine. It's almost He's like a tribute. <laughs> in, in, in Gilbert's own <laughs> sick way. Because Greg, obviously, Greg is one of the most memorable roast guys yeah. uh, out there. I mean, uh, he, he, he was always fantastic at those things. Gilbert probably worked with him on every roast they've ever done. And, uh, yeah, I, I kind of see that as... Yeah, I don't see that as a, I, I don't see either. that as Gilbert. Gilbert's That's a Gilbert. very he's a, he seemed he he said he's an he's, he's never been emotionally attached to on stage yeah. at least. Yeah. After nine right. eleven, he got in trouble because he joked. Right. He goes, "I got to take a flight with a stopover at the Empire State Building." It was a funny joke. <laughs> yeah, he's really. like he's got that gallows humor. Does, and Greg would have fucking I, I, Greg was a harsh comic. Ah, uh, he was. Do I know. You, come on. You think uh, Gilbert has adult autism, <laughs> or maybe some fucking <laughs> Aspergers? Cause, yeah, because there's <laughs> no. I'm, I'm being serious. Yeah, there's, I know. A, the, the, there's a detachment there with that guy. He is a and his weirdo. Emotions. Yeah, he's a weirdo. <laughs> but Greg, come on, Greg wouldn't have that. that you know, he, Greg Geraldo was a roaster. If he's cremated, it was a, it's a joke. Yeah, that's the type of comic he is. I have no problem with that. If he yeah. said something nasty about Greg, or uh, or said something like, you know, hey, Greg was overrated, or something shitty, I would be fucking. Um, yeah, yeah. It, it's horrible in the sense that, it, but it's again, it's a comedian joking about a fucking friend and a comedian. Yeah, yeah. This guy said he went to a fun wake. What? Proving Ant's point, I guess. Hey guys, what's up? What's Hi, up, sir. What's your name, hey, sir? It's Mike. Sorry. Hey, Mike. Mike. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's really odd, right? So, one of my uh, good friends was uh, like an evangelical Christian, like one of the uh, board against. And uh, the first half hour, the caskets open, and there's people just losing their their absolute mind. She was really, really young. And uh, after that, they close the casket, and they do oh, what's known as like, a, a coming home or going home, sorry, ceremony. Yeah. And it becomes like almost like a raging party. I mean, just singing, and people just talking about it. it wasn't like there wasn't a, a tear shed after they closed that casket it was 
it was like it wasn't fun, but it was uh, it made you feel happy. It well, really one, once it. see see with the uh, with the uh, the guineas, uh, I know the, the once the uh, coffin's in the ground, uh, and you go back to someone's house, then it's it's over. The the, the sadness is over, and the party starts. It's oh, nothing yeah. but I'm food Italian, and man. drinking and fucking, oh, uh, yeah, but you, you get, know, having fun. But it's after the fact. But you get the feeling that someone's missing. Someone's missing. Yeah, Which yeah, Which is yeah. always strange. You always get that. And, and that's cool because like, someone where's grandma? is. Oh, that's right. That's why we're oh, here. She's we just dead. put her in a hole. That's Great. right. And now someone else has to figure out how to make the sauce. Grandma, yeah. grandma, are you going to? Oh, that's, that's right. right. Oh, that's right. That's just weird feeling. Someone's, who's Miss? Wait, could, can we do a head sad. count? Something doesn't seem right here. Used to seeing her sitting right there every time I came over. Yeah, I, I also heard a really good tweet yesterday where it was, uh, God must be pretty fucking cool because I'd rather hang out with Greg Geraldo than Lindsay Lohan any day. Oh, well, I like the sentiment go. of that, but the God ones, yeah, just yeah, that, you know, like I got it. I guess God blotty blotty blot. It's yeah. like, needed a roaster. Yeah, that's what yeah. God needed—a roaster. Yeah, right. right. God needed people in heaven shit on verbally. So he's like, "I'm gonna get, go grab Greg." That's <laughs> not the way it works. No. God, God just lets people do what they want. I know. And free, hopefully, free will and uh, sometimes that shit happens. The blood of the martyrs commands you. I was watching that yesterday. Oh really? I, the I, I watched the whole movie. I was really really depressed. You're depressed and then you throw on the exercise. Oh, what, are you a mad you? person? It was on before. I was watching it piecemeal. Watch it stop for a little while. I had to put on Paul Bart Mall Cop. That's hysterical. <laughs> wow. Yeah, sure. And then put on something else that's a comedy of thumb, right? Why couldn't Chip have How? gone? Wait, so. Why couldn't Greg be here and Chip be dead? He loved <laughs> Chip. Did he? Loved Chip. Yes, he did. Oh, great. So. <laughs> I mean, you were really close to Greg Giraldo, and you're depressed, and then you put The Exorcist on. But I can't even wrap my The Exorcist head is that. not a comedy, so it's like it's to me, it's the I know, same kind of shit mood. I know, but you don't want to be mood. creeped out more, or I, wow, and deal with anything having to do with the afterlife, death, this, that. Right, steer clear of the death stuff. You want something light, yeah, some like romantic comedy, or over the top like action, so the death is just yeah. comic booky. Yeah, something. Wow, yeah. I don't know if I could. See the exorcist in the middle of the day in a good mood. Forty mile an hour winds. Mother I told you. Fuck him, man. It's no, I mean I just know. Crazy out there. Like you don't even fucking know. You're not flying. It's sick. I'm telling crazy. you. Crazy. I don't think you're flying. What are they saying at the airports already? Is there no are delays yet? They they were saying that uh, expect delays oh, yeah. and cancellations, uh, and forty mile an hour sustained gusts fifty to sixty. Uh, it's it's. Like the truck when I was driving, my truck was like, whoa, like leaning over uh, as I was driving in. It, it just so all flights will be affected by that, not just Embraer's. Oh also. yeah, yeah, everything. Big planes too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 not pleasant out. <laughs> it sucks. Spencer K. My wife recently went to a wake for a friend who committed suicide by shooting himself in the face. Yo, open casket. They wrapped a bag around the back of his head. Stop it. That uh, Do I look at that? I don't know if I can look at that. Shot himself in the face. But So why the bag in the back? Yeah, in the back. What is that about? Oh, because that's where it blows out. Like Marvin? You know that shit. Yeah, well, the, the front entry, wouldn't look good either. Yeah, you would, you would think. Unless it was a shotgun blast in his mouth. I don't know. Then it would clear out, you know, the back of his head. And keep everything nice. Maybe the front would keep be okay. Keep nice. They could slap that mouth shut. Just get a little, like, uh, what? Like some clay. Yeah, yeah. They'd use that fucking... Yeah, they rebuild you with some clay. That's what they do. Oh, they put, like, clay in there. And, I don't know. This is some morbid shit. I don't like that shit. It really is morbid. Uh. Uh, Dad's wake was more of a celebration. I, I, think, I think if... Um, the person's older, it's easier. Yeah, and you absolutely. celebrate their life a little, a little more. Absolutely. When my Grammy, when my Grammy died, like uh, what was that last year or something? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it was like kind of you know expected. She was well into her nineties, and it was kind of a uh, you know slap the lid shut, lower the box in, go back to the house, and uh, it was a little vino with Uncle Tony and and eating and shit. Real gavon shit. <laughs> As the Mexicans are just putting shovelfuls of dirt on the casket. Oh, I know. As soon as you leave. Bring in the Mexicans and their shovels. Do they even use shovels? Now? You always see the backhoes now oh, yeah, I, down at, at the cemeteries, and you're like, oh, boy, can't we just 
keep one tradition, the grave digger. Why is the grave digger now like a fucking teamster? Ah. They used to be the creepy <clears throat> ghouls with the shovels. <laughs> uh, that's the weird one. The guy that um, was was kind of embalmed and put on his uh, his motorcycle. Is it creepy? Yeah. Why do you want to do that? That is creepy. Perpetually just hunched over that gas tank. He's gonna have a bad back in eternity. <laughs> yeah, eternity with a horrible pain in your I hope lower they have back. Chiropractors that are still practicing <laughs> after their deaths. Well, one probably died right after because God needed a chiropractor. Yeah, that's right. God gets uh, one of everything. He certainly does. Uh, I don't know. I mean, everyone's calling about funeral shit. That's morbid. I want to have a happy show. I want an happy day. We'll have an happy day. <laughs> yeah. Burp. Ah, too much. We could play uh, Greg Giraldo doing the little roasting. You you don't feel sad listening to people that are just recently dead? <clears throat> I don't listen to oh, Greg now. You can't handle that either? No, it, to me that's kind of sad. It's weird. It's weird and it's very sad. But, you know. He was a really funny fucking guy. Oh, yeah, he was yeah. funny. So I, I don't feel we bad played a, to We played a clip of him talking about being on a plane all messed up. Yeah. That was, yeah. you know, yeah. it's, it's interesting. Yeah, it uh, we have him roasting uh, Chevy Chase. Want to go with that one? Yeah, let's go with that one. Sure. Here's uh, Greg Giraldo, everyone. This is an awkward situation for people like me. I mean, what the hell have I accomplished? Look at this. This guy's a comedy giant. I'm supposed to make fun of him? I can only dream of making three good movies and 40 <laughs> ones. <laughs> there are no interesting, famous people up here. Look, myself included, I know I'm nobody, but this was supposed to be a big night for me. I was supposed to rub shoulders with big shots. Look at these people. You've been in 40 films. The biggest movie star up here is Al Franken. An OJ roast would have drawn more star power. No Aykroyd, no Murray. You couldn't even have gotten any of those midgets you worked with in Under the Rainbow. They always brighten up a room. Bring down the midgets. We got booster seats. Right, Paul? There's booster seats. Where are the midgets? Tonight is about Chevy. And again, I feel uncomfortable trashing you. You've done things I can only dream of. Only in my wildest fantasies could I even hope to have a six-week run hosting a talk show that made Arsenio seem watchable. <laughs> Your show lasted six weeks. Sally Jesse Raphael's lasted 16 years. That's got to feel good late at night, huh? <laughs> All joking aside, honestly, it's a thrill uh, to be here honoring Chevy. Is it Chevy or Chevy? Che Chevy? Chevy? I don't know. I can't... <laughs> it's, uh... It's a, it is, it's a thrill, a comedy icon, and living proof that you could actually snort the funniness right out of yourself. <laughs> thank you, and uh, thank you, Chevy.